welcome to another video. I'm Stitch and today I want to show you how I turned this into this. Back in March, I started junk journaling as a way to navigate all the big feelings that come with making and wearing cosplays. From the worst frustrations and disappointments to the highest joys and achievements as well as every little up and down in between. To be honest, I didn't think it would stick. I had tried bullet journaling before and quickly gave up because my handwriting wasn't aesthetic and one mistake was enough to ruin an entire page. But in six months, my first junk journal was completely full and I loved every single page. It had become a safe space for my thoughts and feelings, as well as a vivid collage of my creative interests. So what is a junk journal? Basically, it's a cross between a diary and a scrapbook with an emphasis on collecting ephemera from daily life. Things that are usually overlooked and thrown away, like packaging and wrappers and advertisements. It can include your own writing or it can be completely visual. Personally, I like to create themes based on colors or characters using a lot of Japanese snack wrappers, artist business cards, and merch packaging in particular. As for the journaling, I write about whatever costumes I'm working on, my experience at cons and photo shoots, big cosplay goals, and any media or projects I'm excited about. Designing the pages completely clears my mind and is such a relaxing way to spend time. I often make the collage portions first and just leave space to write in later. That means my journal can be slightly out of order chronologically, but I don't mind. There's so many things you can journal about even if you think your cosplays aren't that exciting. I've made pages for my cause plans, monthly reviews of my progress and goals, lists of upcoming anime and manga I want to try, reminders for self-care activities when I'm in a crafting slump, plans for upcoming holidays and events, I've rambled about exciting updates in my favorite fandoms, and filled pages with memories and mementos from friends. I truly think it's something that any creative person can enjoy. The best part of junk journaling is that you need very little to get started. One of those notebooks you're afraid to use, scissors to cut up the junk you collect, a trusty old glue stick, where are you going? And if you're feeling fancy, a glue tape roller and some colored pens. Now for the junk. What exactly is it? Some of the things I like to collect include food packaging, especially for Japanese snacks. There's so many cute designs with Sanrio characters. I also collect business cards from fan artists when I go to conventions or markets. I save any pretty packaging for merch as well. Blind boxes, pin backings, collectible cards, postcards, envelopes. Paper gift bags and tissue paper make great backgrounds. And of course, you don't have to limit yourself to just ephemera. Junk journaling has been a great way for me to actually use the stickers I've been given over the years. And washi tape is great for making flippable parts on a page or attaching something less permanently. I also like to use small notepads or post-its. Junk journaling has made a surprisingly big difference in my life. First of all, it's been a huge source of fun. Every outing becomes a mini scavenger hunt to collect fun trash for my journal, and I've flipped through its pages countless times just to look at what I've created. I've conquered most of my sticker anxiety from sheer practice, and I even feel more resilient as a person. Journaling has allowed me to take charge of my story, make sense of the challenges I face, and celebrate every small accomplishment without fear of judgment. Don't get me wrong, I am at the end of the day my own fiercest critic, but something about the junk aspect of journaling forms a gentle barrier between me and my thoughts. I can flip through and remember what each page is about without rereading my own words and judging every sentence, or trying to revise my feelings into something more eloquent.
Now when something upsetting or frustrating happens in the crafting process, it's no longer something that just happens to me. It's part of a story that I choose to tell myself. And there's something quite powerful and healing in telling your story, whether you intend it to be or not. When we write down what happens to us, we unintentionally find ways of making sense of it, finding a bit of value in the experience. And when we don't have anyone but ourselves to impress, it's so easy to acknowledge and celebrate the little wins. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day.